It's Artie and Jack again, this time around the second part of the Goldie building, simply referred to as the office. This is not the brick one, no, this is the clockwork one. Front, yeah, the front building. So we're still working on page to page, as we mentioned in the earlier video. We're following our own instructions, one page at a time. If there's something a little weird, something a little different, maybe a technique that we use that uh, maybe we wouldn't have used before even ourselves. We're going to, going to try to include it. And remember. As we turn the page, you turn the page, and we do have other videos on our website regarding all kinds of things, including the great 27-page Craftsman 101 uh, book on the front page of our website. So it's so says most most of the techniques we use here are all in that book. So. They really are, but these are specific to this kit, and sometimes you do run into things that are very very specific. So we're going to start on this page now. If you notice, this is the second kit. The second building in this book is, as you turn pages, we simply call it the office. And uh, Jack, uh, why don't you uh, just introduce where we're going with this? All right. Uh, if we look at the first section of this, this is it has a couple over overview drawings of the uh, of the building itself, front and back and side. So that's basically it. Just tells you what it kind of looks like. The next page, which is called the office, it has uh, ilu it's illustrated in scale. So this is kind of a reference you can use to um, actually measure out, if you look around the big doors, you can measure those pieces right off of this drawing. You can measure all your trim boards, or, or, unless they're cut with lasers, um, and it's pretty straightforward. It shows where the windows go, doors go. So it gives you a good idea what you what you're trying to produce when you're building with it. And there's something very critical on the next page. It says all bracing, 532nd, which is our standard bar mills bracing. But this is meant to be used as a template. And it's critical because the roof kind of drops down from the front wall and kind of sits higher on the back wall. So you want to pay special attention to this. Yes. You want to look at the bracing. It shows you here. Um, it, 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 it has a dimension here. You want to follow those dim dimensions very accurately. Um, as he said, the back wall is actually a little bit lower than the front wall. So you have the, the fascia coming up over the top. So they will meet. Um, on. So pay attention to the, the way the... The bracing is done on on the walls here, and it'll show you the front wall, the back wall, and then the three small walls. I mean the two end walls, and then the three walls with a little extension out the back. Watch your clearances, and remember it's clapboard, so you want to brace vertically because you want right. to be grain against grain, and that's that's how that works with clapboard. It shows a frame of one sixteenth frame around the big doors. You see it in the front. Don't forget to pre-paint those. Whatever color your trim is going to be, you can use that. Or if you're going to do all white, which we did, um, just paint them the white. And remember, if it shows you as a 16th inch difference, and use it. This happens to show the corner boards at the end. We used our corner boards as the same color, so it was easy to just paint them the same color. The next page just shows all the, the, cut, the pieces that are cut. Uh, gives you an idea of what, what boards they're on. They're all numbered. You can find them. Makes it a lot easier in the end to, to just hunt them down off of those pieces. The next page um, is it shows you how the walls go together to create your rectangular building. Um, again, if you're going to paint your corner posts a different color, you want to paint them and then put them on after you've painted your wall. You can paint them flat. If it's going to be all one color, you can put it together and paint it if you want. Um, the next section is aging and weathering clad wood siding. We must we, have a video on that someplace. Yeah, the easiest we? way to do that is either go on to the, um, the laser board, uh, laser kit 101, and there's a whole section on how to do it. it the crafts put nail holes in, exactly. how, to, how to lift boards, how to do all kinds, how to, how to grain it. Go in there and take a look. It'll show you all the stuff you need to know. And remember, you can download that from the home page on our website. Just look on the right-hand side of the page for the link, print it out, just view it on your screen, but it's 27 pages, which is... Yeah, don't forget if you're going to age your boards, it's easier to do it with them flat on the board. Don't, don't put them together and try to age them. It's easier to lift boards and put nail holes when they're laying flat on the ground. And then go the, ahead and pay attention to the top right. of the page. Right. 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 Yeah. Um, once you get your rectangular done, and remember, you want to make sure that all four of your corners are square. If your corners aren't square, your roofs aren't going to fit. So you want to make sure, be very careful. My, the way I do it, I create a back wall and one end wall, make sure that they are square. Use a square or use a metal tray or whatever you want to do. 
and then do the other two two pieces and then as you take the two four square pieces and put them together they will be square if two are square all four will be square so we're going to add that little back piece once we've got our square and that's just basically three pieces together creating a U shape and it's going to fit right up against the wall there's a little bit of slop there you can move it back and forth where you think it looks good but make sure you got to have some space between your windows basically what you're doing is working on the shell here and assuming that this is all painted and boards lifted and nail holes if you wish here again use that uh, Craftsman Kit 101 yep. tutorial as well in addition to these videos uh, then the next thing would be to add uh, what would be uh, the trim the trim pieces on the on the front wall okay yep um, again pre-paint everything it's so much easier than trying to paint it once it's done and they'll fit they'll lay over each other basically they're what they call a layup method you put the first one down the next one goes over the top to give you a step and then the piece goes across the top. Pre-painted, they'll look really good when they're done. Um, you know, you may do a little sanding here and there to make them really look tight, but not, not a lot. One step at a time, make sure it's done properly before you continue. Uh, that's the secret of this whole thing. It's, uh, it's just like a model railroad. You, know, you just build one piece at a time, approach structure building the same way. It'll become very <clears throat> natural to you if it hasn't already gone to that point. There's one thing I found that I didn't see in the instructions when I was going mm -hmm. through. There's actually a platform underneath the back door. There's a little concrete pad that goes in there. And it, it's... Um, Is it in the kit? Yeah, I don't rail know. landing. Did we include it? Yeah. Oh, okay. We put it in. That's, so it's, it's, on, it's, it's on letter B like boy A. B8, yeah. And what it's going to do is it's going to sit directly under the back door. And it gives you some face to put some stuff around the back door. And it gives you a step down. So. And B means basswood. Yep. It means it's an eighth of an inch thick. So really, it's about a foot yep. thick in real life. Yep. So it will sit. It should sit proud above your scenery, the surrounding scenery there. Yep. So. And the next picture down, it's going to show you how to put your um, your rake boards, which is the piece up under the roof, and all around the little addition and your raft tail. And paint, paint those whatever your trim color is. If it's white, leave them white. If it's green, leave them green. But you want to paint those the contrasting colors of the trim board. And your rake board number twenty is actually cut in one continuous yep. piece. So one piece. And it's made out of laser board and it's sticky sided. So make yep. sure you paint it before you install it. And may paint the right side. Don't paint, yeah, the, don't paint, the, sticky don't paint side. the sticky side, as they say. <laughs> well, you're a wise man, Joe. Yeah, once you let them think you can <laughs> now you can let some of that dry and go back and do your windows and your doors. Um, we have a mix of windows and doors here. We have plastic windows, we have laser cut doors and laser cut windows. So if you look at the little sub-assembly, how they, they go together. Again, if you want doors that are multicolored, in other words, the basic color of the door is red and then the, all the trim around it is white, you're going to have to paint those before you put them together. Same thing with the trim around the door. Then you can glue them all together and um, test fit them into the wall and make sure they fit. You have to admit, on this kit, Jack, the, the, uh, the uh, structural elements are far more traditional than on yes. the first building, the yeah. brick building. So technique-wise, this is these are techniques that most of you probably already have, but you may want to revisit. Yeah. And this is why we're offering these tutorials uh, for some of these kits. This is uh, we're down to really what turns out to be our last page, which is a uh, very yeah. quick. Compared There's a to the thing first about painting building. details; you can go through that pretty quick. Uh, if you need more information on that, go back to the tutorial 101. Absolutely. Yeah, and that'll show you some more too. The last one is an overview on where you place your windows and your doors. There's one other thing I saw in here that it kind of doesn't show. There are two chimneys and two vents and a stove pipe. It shows you, the, I mean the stack pipe. It shows you the stack pipe in the back on the little addition, uh, which is a black straw. You're going to paint that up in a flat uh, piece of plate that goes on the roof. Which well, the, the metal flat, just so you know, the, that straw, what you want to do is prime it first. Because yep. you want to give it some tooth. Yep. And once you've given it the tooth, you can play around. Jack, in, in the prototype we did, actually painted it one color and, and painted the top like a silver. And it's really effective. And uh, you can see that in the photos. It adds a little to the height. And the plate I almost forgot to do on this kit, it's, um, it's just a piece of square. And I think it's, it's, uh, it's on your P16, which is a plywood P16th of an inch thick. It's, it's number number 26. And that would be the uh, the big to represent the big steel plate that would sit right. under the pipe to support that particular part of the uh, the roof on that uh, on that shed out there. Yeah, let me check something here too. Let me something. One more other thing. The castings may vary a little bit from what you're seeing in the pro in the prototype photos. We stay pretty true, but sometimes they just don't work, or we just 
Oh, we just don't have uh, very clean molds to make them from. Of course, these things do have to be replaced from time to time. Uh, but basically, this is a very, very simple kit. Uh, not to say you shouldn't take your time with it. No, no. It, it, um, you, can, you can do a lot with, believe it or not, you can do a lot with the kit um, as, you, as you finish it up with weathering and, and making it your own. Add some pipes in the thing. There is a vent on the top of it that you're going to put right in. You're going to cut a little hole and drop it in. And a couple of chimneys and some other vents. And those are all, if you need to know how to paint those, go back, to, as I said, to the... To the uh, you know, I'm, I have to go back here. There's something that's a little unusual. On the front wall, you have the larger office door. Mm -hmm. And what we did there was, if you take a look at the interior bracing mm -hmm. diagram, we're going to go back a few pages. Uh, this is the time to do it. Uh, if you look at the interior bracing, um, there should be... And I don't know if it's pictured here, but what we did is I took two pieces of interior bracing. Yeah, we braced it. It shows it here. As you look on the, as you look at the picture on the left opening, you'll see a dotted line. Right, but right? it's not that obvious, so right. you want to make sure you see that there. Yes. You yeah, know, you can always add this later on, but this is this is kind of cool. And that actually shouldn't be a dotted line. It should be on the back side. Right, it should exactly. be on the inside of the building, so when you put the door on, the door is recessed. The door is recessed. And if you take a look at the photos here, and even right ahead on page one, you'll see on this photo here that the door is recessed. No special thing. It's just yeah. glued to the back right. of the interior bracing, that 532nd bracing. And that deserves mentioning because, yeah. I mean, we forget. Yeah. Uh, and that's why we're doing these videos, so yeah. we remember. The other one, too, is, and I, I think it's in here, there's a square that actually of a basswood that goes underneath that vent to make it sit flat on the roof. Uh, so then you glue the vent on top of the piece of wood and you glue it in the roof. I think it may be in here. I don't remember offhand. Of course, it's just any scrap would do it on the other hand. So if you have yep. to. But you just makes it look good. Yeah, look, it sit better. Absolutely. We add a little bit of, um, it doesn't come with a kit, but we added some corrugated roofing and some just to make it look old. Just I mean, things out of our scrap yeah, box. Yeah, I, and of course the weathering techniques are the ones that we normally yeah. use. We can't discuss it with every single kid. It gets to be very lengthy. Weathering uh, powder, ink and alcohol, hunter line, uh, all usual. those things are the usual things we use. And those techniques are all in that um, 101. Yeah, the Craftsman Kit 101. Yeah. And that's, that's we use the Craftsman Kit 101 printout in addition to what we're doing videos, in addition to the book page to page as we call it. And of course, the other the other videos on our website. Put them together. We're trying to uh, give you the whole immersion of uh, process of building a, a high end model um, and getting it to come out really, really well. And we thank you for sticking around. And hopefully, you followed this. And you know what? Watch the video a lot. We don't. It's not pay per view. Yeah. You just keep watching it, okay? And so for Jack Ellis, my name's Artie Fahey. Bar Mills. Thanks a lot for joining us. Have fun and, uh, with it. Have fun with the Goldies. Thank you.